I'm wondering if I should retry it. I'm not going to miss this video just in case you snap it in half. <laughs> <laughs> From here, it looks good. You can just really tell that it has a lot bigger ridge on this back side. Mm, dead cat. Ah, yeah. oh, I got it! I missed it! Today is a day where we have a harsh reminder that it is still winter time here in Nebraska. It's now 22 degrees outside and snow covered. We just got snow over the last couple days. After a week or two of record high temperatures, over 70 plus degrees, we were able to actually get the cars out of storage and spend some time in them and that was great. But now it's back to normal here in Nebraska and I had to put the car back in storage. So. For this week's vlog, I wasn't exactly sure what I can do to entertain you guys, what kind of story I can tell. And I started thinking, well, you know what? I actually got some pieces and parts for my car in the mail. Maybe I can apply my first mod. So I guess I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time out here. I'm getting really cold. It doesn't take much for me to get used to the warm weather when it comes over so quickly. But when the cold weather comes back in quickly, it takes me a long time to get readjusted. Uh, even though I've lived here all my life. So with that, I'm gonna go back inside and get warmed up and I'll take you guys with me. All right, I'm back inside where it's warm and thankful that I am because my hands are still just a little bit frozen from being outside. Anyway, I have a package here with me. This I received in the mail a couple weeks ago when I received my license plate bracket for the Corvette. These came along with it and I haven't opened it yet because I've been waiting to actually share this with you guys. This is going to be my first mod to the car. Most people consider a mod to be something performance based, but this is going to be an aesthetic upgrade to the car and I'm eager to see how it looks and how it works. What I believe to be in here, and I sure hope that they are, are eyelid covers for a C7 Corvette. And if you don't know what those are, just keep watching. Well, so as exactly as I expected, I received my C7 eyelid covers. They're painted Laguna Blue. They're just a relatively sturdy piece of plastic with the 3M tape on the back. And it didn't come with instructions, but it seems like it's going to be pretty straightforward. They're contoured to fit over the clear part of the headlight on the top part of it. They're really designed to just change the look of the headlights so that you don't see as much of the headlight. It kind of changes the contour of the headlight to be more sleek and squinty. I got them along with my license plate bracket a while back, so I thought that I'd go ahead and just try them out. I figure if they don't look right, or they don't fit right, or they don't work right, I don't have to leave them on. But let's go check it out. Look who's out here, Todd. You want to go with me? I've got the uh, eyelid covers for the Corvette and I'm going to go try them on. Sure, why not? We'll go grab some lunch and then check out the eyelid covers. Where are we going to eat? Where are we going to eat? Gaines? <laughs> they are our future sponsor after all. <laughs> <laughs> it's the least we can do for them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the kitty. <laughs> <laughs> I got the new sound, <laughs> what do they call this? The noise cancellation device. So this should actually help in all of those videos where the uh, wind was washing out everybody's voices. Some people call it a cattail, some people call it a dead cat, either way. And it definitely looks like a dead cat. <laughs> cool. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Oh, 
that's true. Oh, we don't have a clicker. Wow. <laughs> now that was impressive. <laughs> he was able to shut the garage and get out over the sensor before the garage door closed without making it go back open again. With this big honking camera. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Hey, look at that. Oh. Nice. This outlet actually turns off every time that the car turns off. So I can just leave it plugged in the whole time and leave it to the on position. And every time that blinks, it's actually storing our location. So this is tracking us right now. Todd, tell us a little about what this device is that was sitting here in the console. Well, right now, this device is a bunch of random parts held together by rubber bands. <laughs> <laughs> this is a GPS tracker basically Tell us what exactly is it doing for us here in the car right now so right now every time that this green light blinks it's actually storing our location so it'll store a location about every five seconds and then when you turn the switch to the off position and we have a Wi-Fi connection it'll upload the data that it stored to the cloud server that I've also been building and there I can look at and see a visual representation on a map of where we drove and how far we drove, um, just to kind of see, uh, keep, keep track of where we, we've been, so. So when we get back from checking out the Corvette, I think it might be prudent to sit down with Todd for just a little bit and get a little more information on this cool new device that he's creating and just kind of see what a real brainiac and businessman this, this young 21 year old is. <laughs> Alright, so this is pretty cool. Todd has this new device rigged so that it actually shuts off when the car shuts off because it's plugged into a, an accessory plug that is only powered when the car is running. So watch this. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> So why are we going to the mall to eat canes? Well, it may sound crazy, but their chicken is just slightly better here. I don't know if it's just because they get more traffic and they put out more chicken. Yeah, and it's closer to the vet storage as well. That's true. <laughs> ah, there it is. <laughs> yes? Uh, are you guys video recording? Yeah, I was. I'm afraid that we don't allow. All right, we're just leaving Cane's, our favorite place to eat. Now off to the storage unit to see the Corvette. So we're in the garage where we don't have access to GPS because the walls are so thick, the device is actually telling us that since it's flashing red, it's not getting any GPS signal. Pretty dang cool there, Todd. All right, so we're ready to put on our first C7 eyelid. Uh, the surface has been prepped over on the car itself on the actual lens. Now I just have to take the 3M cover off the back to expose the adhesive. And I'll take this over to the car. Well, I think that was the easiest mod I've ever made.
Hmm. It's sitting up on this ridge a little bit high over here. That one set down in a lot better than this one did. I'm wondering if I should retry it. I'm not gonna miss this video just in case you snap it in half. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to just stay that way until I can figure out how to get under there. From here, it looks good. You can just really tell that it has a lot bigger ridge on this back side. Mm, dead cat. Yeah. Ah, I got it! I missed it! I'm gonna try to reapply this one. This one didn't quite settle into the grooves as well as the one on the other side. And I was able to peel it back up. I'm not sure how well it'll adhere back down now after this. If I start at the top, I might have a little bit better success trying to get it nestled into the edges. Well, and maybe not. This headlight just doesn't fit in the same way that that other one did. Well, I guess that's about as good as it gets. Once I get this car up to about 200 miles an hour, I wonder if those eyelids will stay on. <laughs> like you could if you tried. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, is there a difference? Oh well. You know what we forgot? What? The garage door opener out of the vet. Oh, good <laughs> catch. I thought you were not going to be able to get into the house back home. There we go. That's why he's the smart one in this family. He remembers <laughs> to grab the garage door opener so that we can get back into the house once we get home. So for those of you who watched the Sutter vlogs, you've probably seen Todd before, but he's been scarce in some of the most recent vlogs. And the reason for that is he's been incredibly busy. As a matter of fact, you can see him here behind me. He's working again. So I thought maybe I'd take this opportunity to interrupt him a little bit. Maybe we can have just a short little bit of a Q&A and to learn just a little more about Todd and why he's been so busy and why he hasn't been in these vlogs. We gotta get him back in the vlogs. I think you guys like seeing him better than seeing me. Anyway, we'll check it out. For those of you who don't know Todd, this is my son. Okay, I'm gonna ask you just a few questions to get to understand how, why you've been so busy here recently. Okay. So my understanding is there's been five main things that have been keeping you busy. School, day job, wedding, a new house, and a new business. So starting out, where do you go to school? UNL, University of Nebraska at Omaha. I'm a junior uh, computer science major, that's why I do all this for fun. Then what do you do for a day job? Uh, my day job is at ScoreVision. And what do you do there primarily? I primarily am a programmer. I develop the software in uh, iOS technology. That's awesome. And not like I didn't already know that. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. that's, where, that's where I work too. So another big thing going to be happening this summer. What is that? Uh, I'm getting married. Having a wedding. Uh, Sarah Wilkening is my beautiful fiance and we're getting married in July. So there's something else big happening here in about two or three weeks actually, which is probably exciting news for the both of us. <laughs> What's that, Todd? <laughs> uh, our house is, uh, is gonna be built here in a, in a couple weeks. We move in March 9th. So now, the other thing that's taking a lot of your time, outside of being a full-time student, working virtually a full-time job, and trying to uh, help with a wedding and building a new house and taking care of all those responsibilities, you are also in the throes of launching a brand new business. So we got in the vehicle earlier today and this device was actually setting inside the vehicle, plugged into the cigarette lighter and it was actually operative. So tell us again, Todd, what this device is. What did you, what did you create here? Um, so this device is a combination of hardware pieces, including a Raspberry Pi and a, a third-party GPS device. And what it does is it um, tracks the location 
of wherever it is. So when you put it in a car, it'll actually store the location of your vehicle every five seconds or so. And then um, when it's connected to Wi-Fi and you turn the switch to the off position, it'll upload all of the data to the cloud uh, server that I've been building as well. So you can view it on, on your computer, on a website. Okay, so and this device is actually a component to the bigger business that you are looking at starting. Can you give us in a nutshell exactly what this business is about? Yeah, so CarSnaps is the name of the business. What CarSnaps is, is a business that connects advertisers to everyday drivers uh, to bring their ad on the driver's car and then also connects the driver's car to the social media and to the public for everyone to take pictures and share uh, the advertisement around on social media all over the internet. All right, so Todd, now we've got the overview. Why don't you go ahead and tell us exactly how it works? Yeah, so that's a really good question. And a lot of people have asked me, you know, how, how are you going to get all these people around the public to want to take a picture of these cars and share it around? What, what's in it for them? Well, that's the bread and butter. That is exactly what I am going to tell you. That is how it's gonna work. All right, so I have a few more questions for you. You mind answering a few more just so people can get to know you? Uh, sure. All right, first of all, would you consider yourself a good driver? Yeah, mm-hmm. How old are you? Uh, I'm 21 years old. What is your favorite car? Uh, my favorite car is the McLaren 12C. What is your favorite color on a car? That depends. Uh, a McLaren 12C, orange. A McLaren 650S, green. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite color on a car when you're not looking at it? Uh, huh? What is the top speed you've ever driven? Mm, about 75. Really? Have you ever had any run-ins with the law that you haven't told your parents about? Uh, no. No, Dad. <laughs> On average, how many times a week do you hurt yourself trying to dance in the shower? <laughs> What's the most money you've ever drunkenly spent at McDonald's? Uh... <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, how intolerable do you find baby pictures on Facebook? Seven. <laughs> Who would you let punch you directly in the face? A teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> How many sandwiches have you eaten off the floor? Uh, too many. How many days have you gone without showering? What kind of questions are these? <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you been pulled over by the police? Um, upwards of 11 under 15. What? <laughs> Seriously? I have never been pulled over for speeding though. Fun fact. It's all because I have flashy cars. 